Hi, this is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint, and today we're going to be discussing lemons. Um, what I have in front of me is um, three different sizes of lemons that you can actually find at your grocery store, and um, I brought them all as um, Eureka lemons. And the reason I'm using the Eureka lemon is they're one of the most popular lemon trees that you'll find at your nursery, and I brought a couple um, as examples here um, to show you they're anywhere from a medium to about this size. It can be a little bit larger and it can be a little bit smaller, um, but the largest of the lemon varieties is something called the Ponderosa lemon. So if you wanted to get lemons that are almost the size of grapefruit, um, there's the Ponderosa lemon and they're quite seedy. But this here is a Eureka lemon. I'm gonna cut it here in the middle. And you can see that it's got two seeds in here. They usually vary from anywhere from zero to as many as maybe three to five seeds. Um, great lemon for making salads, for cooking, for making lemonade, um, a variety of um, uses. It's the, it's the most versatile of the lemon varieties. Um, another tip when it comes to lemons, and I'm actually surrounded by about three different varieties of lemons. To my left here, um, I've got my Meyer lemon, which are native to China. And the Meyer lemon is actually a sweet lemon. It's a cross between a lemon and a mandarin is what um, most scientists believe. They're more round and they're actually um, semi-sweet. It's a, it's a sweet sour lemon. Um, better uses again are for lemonade more so than actually for cooking uses unless it's for baking sweet stuff. Um, so we've discussed the Eureka lemon, which are the trees that I've got here. Um, one of my favorites, we talked about the Ponderosa lemon, which are the larger varieties. The Meyer lemon, which is a sweet variety. The Meyer lemon is also, even as a standard variety, on average will grow about six to maybe 10 feet um, if you got it as a standard tree. Um, so it grows on the smaller side of these other lemon trees, such as the Ponderosa, Eureka, and then the other one I wanna discuss is the Lisbon lemon tree, which is native to Portugal. Um, and the Lisbon lemon tree is actually uh, more drought tolerant and more frost tolerant than any of the lemon varieties. So if you're looking for something that's stronger, let's say for Northern California climate, um, I would highly recommend using um, the Lisbon as a lemon, lemon variety that is very similar to the Eureka lemon. Um, and the Eureka lemon is actually native to California. They're saying its origins are actually started here. Um, but the Eureka lemon is um, a very popular, great lemon tree and I've enjoyed growing it. Um, this here next to me is actually a semi-dwarf variety. As you can see, I'm actually eight, six feet tall. Um, the plant is already at six feet. I've cut down shoots that were up to eight feet and the maximum height is supposed to be at about 12 feet. Um, so this here is a Eureka lemon. And again, as we saw over here, this is my Meyer lemon tree. What I want to show you now between these three varieties is that the um, standard size um, Eureka lemon and actually most of the standard citrus trees are grafted on what's called a sour orange rootstock. They're um, popular rootstocks for um, basically growing deep and far and because of that is actually a drought tolerant root system. Um, and additionally, it want to see here as well. Um, it also is a vigorous grower. So I'm taking off this cover here, which I believe the grower is added to basically shield it um, from actually sunburn. And citrus as well as avocados and many other trees that are thin barked are, um, are susceptible to actually getting burnt from the sun. Um, and I believe when you see those wrappers or you'll see other trees at the nursery that are wrapped um, or painted in white, um, they're typically using a latex paint, which um, I'll be talking in other videos on the reasons that I'm against it. Um, one being that they've typically got agents in there that are algicides and fungicides, which are actually damaging the plant tissues, aside from the fact that they're toxic as they break down um, and enter into your soil. Um, so we've got an organic alternative, which I've got here in front of me, which is Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. Uh, and if you can take a look at the other videos to learn how that works. So this here is the Eureka Lemon. Um, on the bottom here, it basically says it's a consistent, heavy producer. Um, my Eureka lemon tree behind me, it's only a year and a half old, uh, produced about 20 lemons last year, and this year it's, it's set to at least, um, set at least 50 fruit. Um, but most of the lemons produce their fruit in the winter months. Um, and here we are now in mid, um, 
in mid spring and I don't have any lemons on any of my trees other than um, small sizes but they're a varying size some are more medium and some are small which I'll show you um, towards the end of this video so this here is the Eureka lemon tree grafted on a sour orange rootstock um, if you zoom in over here you can actually see where the actual graft took place this here is the sour orange um, and it grew over here and then they basically grafted the um, Eureka lemon on top of the sour orange rootstock. They could have grafted anything on top of it. It could be a Valencia orange, a navel orange, kumquats, um, any, any lemon variety. The goal that we're trying to get is the vigor of this rootstock to basically create a large tree. We're talking about a tree that will grow anywhere from 15 to 25 feet tall. The next variety that I have here to the, um, to the right of this tree is the um, is a semi-dwarf Eureka lemon tree. As you can see, it's got um, plenty of flowers on here. Um, it's trying to set some fruit as well. And you can see here, this is the original rootstock. The rootstock on a semi-dwarf is typically a trifoliate orange variety. Um, this here um, grows medium fast, um, has very good um, cold, tardi um, cold resistance, um, frost resistance, um, also disease resistance. Um, root rot resistance, if, if there's um, too much moisture in the soil that could actually root the um, roots, rot the roots, this actually is a um, rootstock that's resistant to that. And as you can see, this is the rootstock and the graft is actually right here where the Eureka lemon was grafted as a V-shape into this particular rootstock. So this is the Eureka lemon growing on a trifoliate orange um, rootstock which um, grows um, a lot slower and basically keeps the plant down to a height of anywhere from 8 to 12 feet as you can see this is ultimately what it's going to grow into. Um, the third lemon, also a Eureka lemon, is grafted on a dwarf rootstock. This will grow uh, anywhere from about 3 to 5 feet and as you can see its growth pattern is, is, is just you know it droops, it's growing down and around um, and really not putting too many shoots to push up and tall. Um, so this here is a dwarf variety. Um, so we're talking about three to six feet um, over time. If you keep it in a container versus the ground, um, that too will affect um, the way it grows. And a container will grow a lot slower, um, which will result in you know a few matter of a few inches and in compared to a few feet um, of growth per year. Um, so this here is the dwarf variety. Again, we're looking at three to five feet, semi-dwarf on average five to ten feet and then the standard variety which will be anywhere from from 15 to 25 feet um, and I'm gonna actually be planting this Eureka lemon standard tree because my goal is actually to create a tree that I can walk into pick the fruit around and I'll use um, a fruit picker to get the, the, the you know the fruit that are higher up in the canopy but I'm looking for a tree that's gonna create shade um, if you're looking to actually pot a lemon tree um, Unless it's going to be a really small pot in a really small place, I would avoid growing dwarf varieties. I love growing varieties that are actually um, anywhere from a semi-dwarf to standard, um, just because it has more vigor than the slow-growing dwarf varieties. Um, by doing a medium semi-dwarf tree, um, the benefit will be at least you'll have the vigor. You can always control the tree's shape by pruning it. Um, and citrus, on the other hand, also do not need much pruning. Um, they usually grow um, into the shapes that they need. Pruning will actually um, help shape into the shapes that you're looking to create. Um, and when it comes to if there's any dead branches within the citrus tree, um, there is no time of the year to not be pruning the dead branches out. It could be any month of the year. If there's dead branches, you always want to get that dead wood out. Um, so here we are, and this is a lesson in regards to standard um, standard citrus tree, semi-dwarf citrus tree, and now dwarf. Um, the next thing I want to share with you, oh, and then with the dwarf um, rootstock, um, the dwarf rootstock is, is known as a um, flying dragon rootstock, and that's the one that actually grows the slowest and basically um, prevents the plant from growing too quickly um, per growing season. Um, so highest vigor, medium vigor, slowest vigor. Um, the other plant I want to share with you here are um, these kumquat trees. Um, the kumquat trees are very famous um, with um, in the Asian world for especially celebrating Chinese New Year's. This is um, a very popular tree for gifting um, as a New Year's um, present within the, um, the Asian culture. 
And what I want to share here is the difference now between a kumquat that's actually grafted on a, um, on a dwarf rootstock versus a kumquat um, plant. Same variety, same fruit, same size fruit as well. Um, so don't be misled by the fact that if it's on a dwarf versus a standard tree that the fruit were going to be bigger. Fruit size is still the same. The quantity um, will be greater on a standard tree as the plant's actually larger and can actually sustain more fruit than a dwarf variety. But they both carry you know, as much fruit as is normal and typical um, within a plant of its size. Um, so this here is the dwarf kumquat tree um, grafted on a dwarf rootstock. And then these two are standard um, kumquat trees grafted onto, as we saw earlier, um, more likely than not a sour orange rootstock, which gives it the vigor to actually grow into trees. Um, again, we discussed um, with the Eureka lemon that a um, the sour orange rootstock will actually allow the plant to grow from 15 to 25 feet. Um, so aside from having a good vigorous rootstock, the type of the plant that's actually grafted on top of the rootstock will actually um, create the height and what it's actually capable of doing. Um, the kumquat is actually very popular for actually being a small to dwarf plant naturally, um, growing no more than usually anywhere from five to eight feet. Um, by putting it on an orange rootstock, it'll actually get taller, but they will not grow 15 to 25 feet typically. This one that's grafted on a um, standard rootstock will only grow up to 12 feet. So um, compared to the Eureka lemon um, to, my, um, to my side here, that'll grow on a standard rootstock from at starting at 15 feet, where this one will stop at 15 feet. That one starts at 15 feet and can go up to 25 feet is the range that it will be most happy. Um, this one on average will be somewhere between eight and 12. And I'm actually gonna be potting, and I'll be doing a video on potting, um, the Nagami kumquat, which is one of my favorite of the kumquat varieties. Um, what we're gonna be looking at here now as well is, and I'm gonna take off this cover here, so if we take off this cover here, I want you to see what I'm looking for when picking a tree. Um, so at first glance, if you can actually um, zoom back and take a look at these two trees, if you were to pick which tree looks better, I'll even tip it for the camera. Would you pick this one if you saw it at the nursery, the one I'm wiggling? Or would you pick this one on this side that I'm shaking now? Um, and I would think that most of the viewers, at a glance, you would assume that this is the better tree. The leaves are a little bit bigger. Um, and another cool feature about the kumquat is the leaves are actually small. The plant is very compact and dense. The beautiful orna ornamental looking plant, and especially when it's got these bright orange, um, you know, quarter sized fruits all over it that are oval. It's such a beautiful tree um, towards the end of the year. It's usually November through January, um, you know, um, fruiting and it can carry all the way through May if you don't pick them all at once. Um, so in regards to picking which one you'd pick, this one here looks very luscious. It's got a lot of leaves, dark green, full leaves. This one here is just going into shoot. It looks pretty sad looking, um, you know, along the side of it. it, has no leaves, has no branches, where this one has a lot of life along the side of it. But if you take a closer look, and I wanna make sure I got my scissors here, um, I want you to come back over here. One of the things I look for when actually selecting a citrus variety is I'm looking at the rootstock and then I'm looking at the grafted union. And if you take a look at the rootstock here, um, we see that this is the rootstock that the Nagami kumquat was grafted onto. It, they cut it off after this graft took off and then it grew into what's now the Nagami kumquat tree. What I look at is to make sure that it's a healthy graft. I'm seeing that the tree is actually starting to heal over the graft and it's closing up. Uh, I'm also looking to inspect along the tree trunk to see if there's any damage to, like for example, when they prune the tree, you can see here is a branch that was once there that they cut. It looks like they kind of ripped it along the side of the bark. Um, but again, that's also healing and closing and, um, and sealing itself in. Um, so this is one choice. But if we take a look at this tree now, here's the, here's the rootstock of the tree. And if you look closely, I'm gonna remove a couple of these leaves here so you can see this more clearly. And I'll take off this bandage. So you can see that the rootstock actually grew all the way up to here. And on this tree, um, they allowed they allowed 
this part of it to actually exist even though it's dead. This wood is all brown um, and an excellent invitation for wood destroying organisms such as beetles and termites to actually work their way into this dead wood and then start digging and eating their way into the heart of the tree. And once this is compromised, the life of the tree is gonna be shortened. Um, so this here, the first thing that should be done is this part should be pruned off. Um, and I don't have my pruners with me right now for demonstration, but I would cut this off um, so it has a good opportunity to heal. The other part I wanna show you uh, as I take a look around here, if you take a look over here, there was once a branch that was on the side and whoever at the nursery that was caring for this tree um, actually cut the branch and tore into the bark. I don't know if you can actually see that on the camera over there, but this is quite a bit of damage along the side of the bark. So there's that, and then additionally, if we take a look up a little higher, we'll actually see that they did the same thing over here. There's another branch over here that was also torn and ripped and went into it. Um, so these are all um, factors that actually make this the less desirable of the two trees to actually select when planting. Um, so now we've got these two varieties. One more thing I want to point out as well is this, and here's another citrus tree um, grafted onto the trifoliate um, rootstock. Trifoliate meaning it's got three leaves. Tri, three, foliate, foliage, leaf. Um, and if you take a look here, it's basically got um, that leaf pattern with one, two, three petals per leaf. This is the trifoliate rootstock, and at the very top, they cut off the top. And then this here is the graft for this citrus variety, which is the Valencia orange. Um, so we basically have um, all of that information um, that we've just shared with you today. Um, follow me and um, be sure to actually, for one, like this video. Be sure to subscribe to this video as well. And as I said earlier, I'm going to be potting, take that back, I'm actually going to be planting this Eureka lemon tree into the ground and I'm going to teach you about the soils and fertilizers that go into caring and getting this um, Eureka lemon to a good start. And then we're also going to be potting this um, Nagami kumquat in a pot and I'm going to be discussing potting soils and fertilizers to actually care for it as well. Um, thank you for watching. Again, I'm Charles Malku with Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. Um, hope you enjoyed this video and again, please don't forget to subscribe and to follow all the rest of these videos. Thank you.